What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle. Today I've got another OU match. This one is against Daniel and I have been switching off between this team and the one in the previous video. So I switched back to this one for this battle and we'll see if I can get these guys to do something. But looking at my opponent's team, the one thing that sticks out to me is the fact that he has a Toxapex. That little spiky annoying asshole always puts in work and honestly my team doesn't really handle it all that well so I gotta work around that thing. Some of the other threats that I notice are the Gliscor and the Alolan Muck. Those things are going to be pretty difficult to take care of along with the Porygon Z. Obviously, I know the Z conversion is coming, so I gotta try to not get swept by that thing. But anyway, let's go ahead and just hop into this battle. So I'm gonna be leading off with my Mamoswine as he actually ends up throwing out his Toxapex. So technically not too bad of a matchup for me. I know that Earthquake does over 50% from this thing, but I really don't want to take a Scald. So he comes out here playing a little bit of Peekaboo as uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and set up Stealth Rock my first turn. It is looking pretty useful here as I expect him to go for some type of hazards as he just goes for the Toxic Spikes as I expected. I do have a Rapid Spinner with him on top on my team, so I'm not really too worried about that. As on this next turn, I'm just going to go straight for the Earthquake. I actually expected him to want to go for the second layer of Toxic Spikes here, so I didn't think I really had to worry. But he actually just ends up throwing some hot water at me, and Mamoswine doesn't really like that a whole lot. Although, luckily, I don't get burned, and it only does a little more than half to me. So, I'm still in pretty good shape here. This next Earthquake will take care of the Toxapex, so I'm expecting him to switch. So, I'm going to go ahead and double switch myself. As I go into my Hitmontop, I really want to get this thing out here to be able to Rapid Spin away the Spikes. As uh, he's actually going to end up switching into his Gliscor, I believe, which... Kind of sucks for me because I don't really have a whole lot of offensive power against that thing. Plus, it could have the potential to start setting up on me, going for like Substitute or something like that. So, I'm kind of worried about this Gliscor, although I do have a Mamoswine still on my team. So, I, I don't have to be all that worried about this thing. So, I'm over here grooving, getting my dance on, as he actually ends up going for the Swords Dance. And I honestly didn't expect Swords Dance, but that makes this thing way more damn scary. Big meaty claws over here playing with swords, and this thing is just sharp as fuck. So, I do go for the Rapid Spin. I get rid of the little layer of Poison Spikes, so I don't have to worry about my whole team getting poisoned, which is nice, as uh, he's going get to get some healing going on by his uh, freaking poison heal, which honestly, I hate Gliscor I, I, with a passion. This thing is always so damn difficult to take care of, but I got to get the hell out of here. This thing got a Swords Dance. I do want to save him on top, and I decide my best option is to go into Paul here, because I am max defense. I know that even with the Swords Dance, I should be able to take at least two Earthquakes, so it does less than half to me, even after the leftovers. Paul's looking pretty solid here. I really should have gone for the, uh, the Slack Off this next turn. I actually just decide to go for damage because I want to get this thing knocked down as much as possible. So he goes for the knockoff. I am going to be able to live that, although I really should have gone for the, the slack off. It would have kept me alive for a little longer, but I end up going for the Scald. I do get a decent chunk of damage, although the bad news is that Paul is going to have to take an attack here and die, unless I want to switch, which nothing on my team wants to come into a Swords Dance boosted Earthquake from a Gliscor, so I do have to let Paul go down early on. Which is sad to see because number one, Paul is my fucking homie, and number two, I no longer have a defense wall. So, at least I was able to get a little bit of damage off, and I do have a plan here. So I decided to bring in Slytherin. I know that I can take at least one attack from this Gliscor, so I decided to go for the Leaf Storm, but I miss because Slytherin hasn't had a fucking optometrist appointment in way too long, and that allows him to knock off my life orb. So, he's just over here soaking up some more poison, and at this point, the only thing I can really do is just go for another Leaf Storm. Had I gotten the first one off, I would have had enough special attack to be able to knock it out with that second one, but of course, Leaf Storm decided to miss that turn, and uh, this allows him to go for an Earthquake. I actually thought this was going to kill me, but Slytherin decides to kind of redeem herself, and uh, I'm able to live that with 6 HP, which is kind of nice, and at this point, the next um, Leaf Storm will be able to take out the Gliscor, although he's just going to switch out directly into the muck here as obviously this thing's pretty specially defensive and it resists leaf storm even with the plus two special attack it's not going to do a whole lot of damage to this thing and i know that he does have priority with the shadow sneak so i got to get the hell out of here and i decide to switch but this man makes the prediction and he goes for the pursuit um pursuit shadow sneak muck is honestly really good you get a lot of situations like that where you expect the um the priority coming but then you can just predict the switch with the the pursuit so i lost slytherin there and it's not looking too hot for me here so i decide to bring in Mamoswine. I expect to switch, so I'm just going to go for the Icicle Crash, but he's actually just going to go into his own face paint. Old Scruffy comes out here, and Icicle Crash is obviously not going to do a whole lot to this thing with the thick fat and all that shenanigans, so it does a little bit of damage, and at this point, I am expecting him to probably just want to go for the Earthquake, but he actually just stays in and goes for the Stealth Rock, which is honestly fine by me, because this allows me to go for an Earthquake, and I'm like, okay, this will kill this, and I don't really have to worry about his Mamo anymore, so... Plot twist, it actually doesn't end up killing this thing because I'm actually jolly. I was expecting him to be adamant, so that way I thought I was going to be able to outspeed that turn, but 
doesn't end up working out and that's gonna allow him to go for one last ditch effort and he goes for the ice shard he's actually gonna kill himself with his life orb which is fine so that turn he didn't see me go for the ice shard I figured it wasn't worth going for so he brings in Gliscor I'm assuming because he doesn't think that I have ice shard so I take this opportunity to just go ahead and pull out the old trump card and I do go for the ice shard there which is gonna take out the Gliscor which is awesome because that thing is super annoying and now it's dead so hell yeah man with swine putting in work so now he goes back into the Toxapex who is sitting at a pretty decent amount of health because he does have the regenerator ability which gives you health every time you switch out so Earthquake is not going to be enough to take that thing out, and I do want to save my Mammoth Swine. Plus, I have an easy switch into Magirna here, who can take any attack from this thing, as he just ends up going for the Scald. I'm Assault Vested and pretty damn bulky, so I take that really nicely. And at this point, I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch. If he stays in, it'll do a lot of damage to the Toxapex, and if he switches out, I'll be able to get a nice little bit of momentum. So he does end up switching, and he's just going to go into the Muck here, who takes some Stealth Rock. And obviously, Volt Switch is not going to do a whole lot, but I get the advantage of being able to switch into whatever the hell I want to. And I decide to go into my Darmanitan, who I probably should have just saved. Honestly, now looking at it, I really needed to conserve Darmanitan's health. And I have limited amount of switches um, due to the Stealth Rock. So, he's going to go for the Shadow Sneak just to get a little bit of chip damage there. As I just go for the Earthquake. I'm assuming he was predicting me to potentially go for the U-Turn, um, trying to get another pivot. But I just decided to play it safe. And the Earthquake is going to take care of the Toxic Pile of Sludge. So, down goes that thing. And uh, now he's going to go into the Serena. So, she comes out here looking thick as fuck shiny as fuck and I don't really want to take a high jump kick so I do have to switch out here and Darmanitan is looking really useful for later on being able to take care of this arena with the flare blade so I do have to conserve that thing as I'm just gonna switch into my hit on top and unfortunately this arena actually goes for the u-turn so that allows him to get a free switch and he actually decides to bring out the Porygon Z at this point and as much as I would like to go for the close combat on this normal type motherfucker I, I really can't because I know that the Z conversion is coming and a lot of the time you do see Shadow Ball in the first slot so I'm expecting this thing to turn into a ghost type. I do have Foresight on this Hitmontop to be able to hit ghost types with fighting moves although I'm just not at the right amount of health to be able to even take an attack from this thing so I do have to go for something different. So he busts out the Z power and here comes the Z conversion. So <laughs> Rubber Duck's looking all angry here, unleashes the full power Z move, and here's the Z conversion. Does turn into the ghost type, so I'm glad that I didn't go for the close combat. Honestly, you either see Porygon Z turn into either electric or ghost. I really didn't want to risk it, so I end up going for the toxic, and that's going to be able to get a little bit of chip damage off on this thing, and I should be able to have uh, my Magirna be able to take at least one attack, and then finish it off with a Fleur Cannon. So, the poison is going to hurt both of us, and at this point, I basically just have to let Hitmontop die, so that way I can get a free switch into my Assault Vest Magirna. So, the Shadow Ball comes, got to bust out the Frown Eyes again, <laughs> and that is going to kill my Hitmontop, which is kind of a bummer, but really not too big of a deal, because the Poison Damage is going to take its toll here, and I do still have Magirna, who's at a pretty decent amount of health here. So, I'm just going to go ahead and click Flare Cannon, as his best option is just to go for um, the Shadow Ball yet again. Luckily, I am able to live that thanks to the Assault Vest. I do actually get a special defense drop, which really doesn't matter at this point, and I'm going to go for the Fleur Cannon, which I actually expected to kill this thing, but since this is a bulky Magirna, it actually is not going to kill it, but thank god Hitmontop comes back from the grave, and his poison is going to be able to take out the PZ. So, didn't get swept by Z Conversion Porygon, and uh, I call that a win on my end. So, I do get the Soul Heart, it's going to raise my special attack right back up. But unfortunately, I'm not going to be faster to be able to get any damage on anything. So out comes the Bayonetta again, as uh, I don't really have any option to switch here. So I have to let Magirna go down, and the high jump kick doesn't miss, which I was actually hoping for. Seeing high jump kick miss is actually pretty awesome when that does happen, but rarely. So at this point, now I'm going to bring back out Darmanitan, who is going to get hurt by some Stealth Rock. And I know that he does still have the Toxapex on his team. So I'm going to go for the U-turn, expecting that thing to come out, as he's expecting me to probably go for the Flutter Blitz. But this thing comes out playing some more peekaboo, and I'm like, I'm, I'm sick and tired of your fucking games, Toxic Pex. I hate this thing with a passion, honestly. It's so bulky, and it's really annoying to take care of. So, I go for the U-turn, get a little critical hit, which really doesn't matter, as this allows me to go into face paint, and unfortunately, thanks to this thing's regenerator ability, it's not going to be at the point where it's killable with Earthquake. So, all I can really do here is just go for the Earthquake, kind of just hope for a critical hit, or something like that, as uh, it's not going to happen, and the Earthquake is going to knock this thing down to a decent amount of health, as... He's going to finish me off with a Scald. So at this point, my last Pokemon is Darmanitan. I am Choice Scarf, so I have to lock myself into one move. Unfortunately, he does still have that Serena left. And I really can't go for Flare Blitz here because I don't have enough health to be able to take the recoil um, from two hits after the Stealth Rock. So 
Browse on fleek comes out. At least his brows are looking good though. They, they on fleek. So I just have to go for the earthquake. At least I am able to kill the Toxapex, which is kind of satisfying to see these things go down, honestly. But his last Pokemon, like I said, is the Serena. And uh, I am locked into Earthquake, so I kind of just have to hope for like a Super Ultra Mega Crit against Bayonetta here, who's basically only taken Stealth Rock damage at this point. Sync comes out here looking fabulous, as, uh, so I do have to just go for the Earthquake. Unfortunately, it is not enough to take care of this thing, and then I'm just going to take a Trop Kick to the face, which actually looks awesome, so the Earthquake isn't going to be able to take this thing out, and a Trop Kick is going to get me right in between the eyes. So, that's going to be the end of that one there. I definitely should have conserved my Darmanitan better. Um, I for sure made some misplays, but honestly, I thought that was still a pretty good match. Good game, Daniel. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, hit that like button if you enjoyed. And plus, don't forget to subscribe for some more Wi-Fi battles. Peace out.